Hey everybody, I just want to do a quick video here. I have been tinkering with one of my tanks today and doing some water testing on it. And it's one of my dirtier tanks, so I want to show you this. This is, well, the color doesn't really come out quite right on camera, but you get the point. Um, this is my nitrate test, and you tell me, what is that? Is it 20? Is it 40? Is it 80? Is it 60? It just looks red to me. I really have a hard time with these tests. Now, I'm assuming because of the tank it is and because of when I've done a, uh, the last water treatment on it and everything, it's probably only about 40 parts per million, maybe just a little higher than that. Um, but this is the issue I've always had with this API test kit is that once you get above those sort of orangey and brown colors, I guess you can just kind of look at it as like red is bad. Once you start getting into any kind of reddish coloration, it's time to do a water change. But I swear for the life of me, I can't tell you whether that is 40 or 80 parts per million. Other than I know my tanks. Uh, I can also use my TDS meter right there and I can correlate the number of the total dissolved solids, which nitrates do account for, uh, etc. So let's go have a look at the tank this came from real quick and I want to show you why this number is so significant. So here we are at my 20 long. Uh, you can really see it is in need of a water change. The water level is way down just from evaporation. Uh, I've got some water flowing back past my filter and coming back in. Oh, well, you can't see him, but my cat Bootsy is standing in the window looking in at me, watching me. <laughs> so the reason that number is so significant is because look how heavily planted this tank is. I have this temple plant is just growing up and out of the top and I keep making cuttings of it and in fact I actually have the cuttings sitting right here in this corner and this corner which are already beginning to develop their own roots I have this pothos plant here I have that pothos plant over there and you can see the root structure on that pothos plant uh, I have all of the algae that's growing in here and I do have some of that uh, spirogyra green hair algae which is a very vigorous grower so you can see this tank's not real heavily stocked. It's surprisingly heavily stocked for the size of the fish that are in there. It just has a lot of small fish, but it's not an insane stock load for a 20 gallon tank. I mean, you can just look in there and see that it's not real heavily stocked. Now, I will admit it's been a long time since I've done a water change. This is one of those tanks I just kind of ignore and I top it off when it needs it. And every now and again, when I feel like it, I'll do a gravel vac and water change. So it's probably been a month since I've worked on this tank and the nitrates are now getting up there again. But that's just it. Um, I hear people all the time suggesting this idea that you can have a zero water change tank simply by growing um, pothos plant in a sump or a refugium or something like that. And I suppose it would be possible, but you would need a tremendous amount of plant growth to just withdraw that much phosphate and nitrate out of your water that it was actually just taking it up to the point where your water was being cleaned by the plant uh, growth itself. So that does certainly help. All of the algal growth helps. All of the cuttings in there that are developing their own new roots. All of that is absorbing those uh, phos phosphates and nitrates out of the tank. But they're still accumulating. They still do climb. So you still do need to test your tank. You still do need to do your water changes. And you still need to do proper tank maintenance. But, as you can tell, you can greatly reduce the amount of tank maintenance you have to do simply by growing a lot of vigorous growing plants in your tank. But it is not a miracle cure. It does not magically make you not have to do water changes anymore. And that's really the only point I wanted to make, is that even with all this heavy planting, you will still need to do water changes. You can just do them a lot uh, less frequently. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. Uh, you never know what you're going to get with me. Lots of good stuff coming up. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you real soon on the next one.